Good day grade 11. Welcome to your first lesson in week 6. In this lesson we're going to be looking at quadratic inequalities. So basically what it is is solving quadratics where we do not have an equal sign. We either have a greater than sign or we have a smaller than sign or we have a greater than or equal to sign or we have a smaller than or equal to sign. These are what we call inequalities. They do not equal it perfectly. So the way you do this is we start off just as we would normally do. So we're going to factorize this. So if we factorize this we've got x squared x and we've got x. Coefficients of this are just one so it's x and x. The plus sign tells you both signs are the same and they're both minus. And then we want factors of 6 that give us 5, so we're going to go for 3 and 2. And these have to be greater than or equal to 0. So therefore our numbers are x equals 3 or x equals 2. Now if we're factorizing it normally, that's what we'd have, end of story. But now we want to know when is this function bigger than or equal to 0. We know it equals 0 at this point, but now we need to know when is it bigger than or equal to. Now grade 11's, whenever you solve an inequality, I don't care how easy it seems to you, you will always draw a number line. You will always draw a number line. Why? Two reasons. One, to make sure you get the sum right. Two, because there's marks allocated for it. So if you are not doing it, even if it's super easy, you still are going to lose marks. So please just do the number line. So our two points are two and three. Now, if we are allowing it to equal zero, then we color it in a closed dot. You should know this from about grade 9 I think. Closed dot on a number line means you're including that number. Now in order to find out where this thing is positive, what we're going to do is now choose numbers along this number line and substitute it into this and see what the value of that expression is. Okay, so let's say for example I'm going to change to another color. Okay. Let's choose a number on this side of 2 and I'm going to choose 0. So if I substitute into that, I get 0 minus 3, 0 minus 2, we get minus 3 times minus 2 which is a positive number. And because we're just trying to see where it's bigger than naught, we don't actually care what that number is. We just know minus times minus is a plus and therefore we've got a positive number here. Now we want to choose a number between 2 and 3, so I'm going to choose a 2 and a half. So again, we've got 2 and a half minus 3, 2 and a half minus 2. So if we look at this, 2 and a half minus 3 is definitely going to be a negative number, and 2 and a half minus 2 is a positive number, but a minus times a plus is a minus. So that bit there is negative. And then finally we want to choose a number bigger than 3. So I'm going to choose 4 for example. So we go 4 minus 3, 4 minus 2, 4 minus 3 is a positive, 4 minus 2 is a positive, positive times a positive is a positive. So we look at the question again and they want to know when is this expression greater than or equal to naught. So do you agree that this is greater than or equal to naught on this side of the 2 and including the 2 and including the 3 and then above the 3. So therefore we would say x is going to be smaller than or equal to 2 or x is going to be greater than or equal to 3. Right. Now there's another way that you could solve this if you realize that this quadratic is the same equation as the parabola. And we know that if the coefficient of your x squared on your parabola is a positive, then we end up with a happy graph. So if we were looking at this as a parabola, we would say, oh look, x squared minus 5x plus 6 is greater than 0. We know that it cuts the x-axis at 3 and 2. And because this is a positive value, we've got a happy graph. So we could draw this like this. Okay, it's a very bad drawing of a parabola, but you get the point. And we know therefore that the whole of this is greater than or equal to 0. In other words, y of this is bigger than or equal to 0. Why? on this side of 3 and that side of 2. So 
if you realize that what you're solving in your inequality is a parabola and you can solve it looking like that then you're welcome to do it however if you don't see it or if it's not then you have to use the numbers either way you have to use a number line let's look at another example this time we've got 2x squared plus x minus 6 is smaller than or equal to 0 so again we're going to factorize is smaller than or equal to 0 so our factors of 2 are 2 and 1 and our factors of 6 are 6 and 1 and 3 and 2 and we want a plus 1 so 2 times 2 gives me 4 and 1 times 3 gives me 3 so that will work so we're going to go 2x minus 3 x plus 2 is small and equal to 0 therefore we've got that x is equal to 3 over 2 or x equals minus 2 so if I have to draw my number line okay we've got x is minus 2 or we've got x is 3 over 2 now if you again realize that this is the same equation as a parabola and we see that this is a positive we know that we've got a happy graph and this is where it cuts the x-axis we can draw our parabola like this and then they say when is this smaller than or equal to zero in other words when is the parabola below the x-axis and it would be between 3 over 2 and minus 2 but it's also equal to naught at minus 2 and at 3 over 2 so that is the way you could do this if you realized this was a parabola but if you didn't you could still do it the normal way with the number line so I'm going to just have to do that separately over here so we've got this is minus 2 and this is 3 over 2 we know that those are both equal to 0 at that point and this is an equal so therefore we're going to color the dots in so it's equal to 0 and equal to 0 if we substitute numbers into this let's choose minus 3 we've got 2 times minus 3 minus 3 okay and then we've got minus 3 plus 2 2 times minus 3 is minus 6 minus is going to be minus and minus 3 plus 2 is a minus and a minus times minus makes a plus choose a number between minus 2 and 1 and a half I'm going to choose 0 so I'm going to go 2 times 0 minus 3 and then I've got 0 plus 2 which becomes a negative times by positive which is a negative number and if I choose a number bigger than 3 over 2 let's choose 5 so we've got 2 times 5 minus 3 and we've got 2 plus I mean 5 plus 2 so 2 times 5 is 10 minus 3 is a positive 5 plus 2 is a positive so it becomes a positive and we go oh look yeah is where this works between and including so it's from minus 2 to 3 over 2 so we'd go x is smaller than or equal to 3 over 2 and bigger than or equal to minus 2 right let's do another example ah so the first thing we need to do is get everything onto one side so I'm going to choose to get everything onto the left hand side so we've got 3x squared plus x minus 4 is greater than 0 and we're going to factorize it okay so we've got factors of 3 and 1 and our factors are 4 and 1 and 2 and 2 and we want it to be plus 4 and minus 3 so we end up with 3x plus 4 and x minus 1 Therefore, your options are x is equal to minus 4 over 3 or x equals 1. And this one, I'm just going to use, realize straight away that that looks like a parabola and it cuts the x-axis at minus 4 over 3 and at 1, okay? And it is a happy graph, so it's going to look like this, whoopsie very badly drawn but you know what I mean and they want it to be greater than 0 so if we had to draw it it would be not including minus 4 over 3 and valid for anything smaller than minus 4 over 3 not including 1 but valid for everything above
above 1. So therefore x would be greater than 1 or x would be smaller than minus 4 over 3. Right, let's look at another example. Aha! Now, grade 11s. We first have to take our 2 across. Whenever we're doing an inequality, we cannot just leave the number on the side. and We're not going to solve for it. And the reason they're telling us that x cannot equal 3 is because if this is 3, then we've got 3 minus 3 equals 0. And then we're dividing by a 0, which is not possible. Okay, so it's invalid. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the 2 across. So we've got x over x minus 3 minus 2 is smaller than 0. Now there's something that's very important. If you take anything across, let's say for example you've got 2 times by minus 3 is smaller than x. If you want to take that minus 3 across, so we want to divide by that minus 3. So it means that minus 6 is smaller than x. If we want to get rid of that minus on this side, when we divide both sides by minus 1, we get up x, that becomes a minus x. But when you divide or times by a negative number, that changes science to make it still valid. Right. Now the problem is, the reason I'm telling you this is because Another way that you would think to solve this, if for example this was an equal sign, if this was an equal sign you go x over x minus 3 is equal to 2, then you go oh this is easy, x is equal to 2 x minus 3. No problem doing this if this is an equal sign, but if it's not, if it's an inequality, we cannot do this because we don't know what that x is. We don't know if this x is really big and therefore that number is positive, in which case this is fine. Or if x is 1 or something smaller than 3, then this ends up being a negative number. And then that sign would change. So therefore we cannot do this, okay, when we have an inequality. We cannot divide our times by a variable. So we have to be very careful of this. So what we do is we take everything, just the one side, and leave the naught on that side. Now, to solve this, we get a common denominator of x minus 3, so then we've got x minus 2 times x minus 3 is still smaller than 0. So then we say, okay, fine, if we multiply this out, it becomes x minus 2x plus 6 all over x minus 3 is smaller than 0. Therefore, we've got x minus 2x is minus x plus 6 is over x minus 3 is smaller than 0. Now, if we do this on the number line, our two points, our two significant points are 3 and minus 6 plus 6 equals 0 is 6. Now, again, it says x equal does not equal 3, but most of the times they don't tell you that. You have to realize it for yourself, okay? So if we divide by 3, it is undefined. Now there are two ways that you can draw this on your number line. You can either draw to the question mark to show it's undefined, or you can just put a cross through it. And since I've been seeing most textbooks do a cross through it, I'm going to do a cross through it as well. So that means that it cannot be 3 because it's undefined. At 6, this expression equals 0, and because you are not including any zeros here, we are going to put an open circle. Now we're going to do it like usual, we're going to substitute numbers in and see what this gives us. So let's just change colors so we can see what we're doing. So let's choose a number smaller than 3, I'm going to choose 0. So we get minus 0 plus 6 over 0 minus 3, which becomes plus divided by minus, which is a minus. Remember again, we don't need the actual numbers. Let's choose a number between 3 and 6. Let's choose 4, for example. So we've got minus 4 plus 6 over 4 minus 3, which is a positive over a positive. So that's a plus. And then finally, any number bigger than 6, let's choose 7. So we've got negative 7 plus 6 over 7 minus 3, which is negative over positive, which is a negative. Right, so now let's look at what they want again. They want it smaller than 
zero. So do you agree it is not including six but bigger than six and not including three but smaller than three? So therefore you've got x is smaller than three or x is bigger than six. Okay, let's look at another example. So again, they've been nice to us. We've got x squared minus 4 over x minus 7 is greater than or equal to 0. And they've told us that x cannot equal 7. Why? Because if we div that is 7, we've got 7 minus 7, which is 0. And that's undefined. Right. Now, the first thing we need to do whenever we do this, we always have to factorize everything. And in this case, we can't factorize the denominator, but we can definitely factorize the numerator. So this becomes, if we look at it, this is a perfect square. That's a perfect square and it's separated by a negative. So this is the difference of two squares. So what does that become? It becomes x minus 2, x plus 2, all over x minus 7 is greater than or equal to 0. So now we've got a number line. Now significant numbers are going to be minus 2 for x minus 2, 2 and 7. And we know it cannot equal 7 because if it was 7 it would be undefined. But when it equals 2 or minus 2, the top lot is going to be 0 because 2 minus 2 is 0 or minus 2 plus 2 is 0. And we're allowing it to be equal to 0 so therefore we can color in our dots. And now we're going to substitute in numbers. Now to find out when this expression is greater than zero. So let's do that. Let's choose a number smaller than minus two, uh, minus three. So we go minus three, minus two, minus three plus two over minus three, minus seven. Minus three, minus two is a negative. Minus three plus two is a negative. Minus three, minus seven is a negative. Oh, it looks like a little face. Minus times a minus is a plus divided by minus is a minus. So there we go, minus. Grade elevens, by the way, you don't need to show this working at all. All they expect you to do is show this number line. So this can be in your rough work on the side, or you can just use it on your calculator, or you can just do it in your head and think about whether these are plus and minuses, and possibly use a pencil when you're labeling them. Okay, let's choose a number between minus two and zero. I mean two, let's choose zero. So we've got zero minus two, 0 plus 2 over 0 minus 7 minus, so that becomes a negative times a positive divided by a negative, minus times a plus is a minus, minus divided by minus is a plus, right? Choose, choose a number between 2 and 7, I'm going to choose 5, so we've got 5 minus 2, 5 plus 2, and then 5 minus 7, 5 minus 2 is a positive, 5 plus 2 is a positive, but 5 minus 7 is a negative, so that ends up being a minus. And finally, choose a number on the other side of 7, let's choose 9. So we've got 9 minus 2, 9 plus 2, all over 9 minus 7, which becomes, what is it? It becomes a positive times a positive all over a positive. So therefore that is a positive. Now I've written that quite high up so I'm just going to erase that but I mean it's working still there just so that I can write underneath the number line. So if we look at this now what did they ask? They asked for when is it greater than or equal to zero? So do you agree it equals zero at minus two equals zero at two and it's greater than between these two numbers. But it's also greater than if the number is bigger than 7. Therefore, our solution would say x is smaller than or equal to 2 and bigger than or equal to minus 2 or x is bigger than 7. Right, grade 11s, that is all that I'm going to be teaching you about inequalities at the moment. You need to go and try lots of examples and then make sure you understand them and then go do the assessment at the end of the section. Have a great day.